guys, so the first thing we're gonna learn how to do is recover from getting pushed. You might be thinking, did I spend all this money to learn how to push and recover from getting pushed? Yeah, you did, because that's um, a really essential part of close protection tactics. And you'll see why here in a bit, but just suffice to say, when I was in Sirius Academy, Close Protection Academy, the Harvard of Bodyguard Schools in Denmark, um, the first day, that's all we did. We literally, the, the first day, we only learned um, pushing, getting pushed, and then what we're going to focus on next, which is stepping in front of your client. So it's really that important, um, and then everything is gonna build off of this. So when it comes to getting pushed, basically the concept is, Jen, you're gonna stand in front of me here, uh, facing me, and then pull, you're gonna just push me real quick. Okay, so notice there, I'm blading off. Why am I blading off? Well, it should be apparent, but if it's not, push me again. I've got a firearm or something on here, on this side, maybe it's a knife, maybe it's a firearm, so push me again. I'm blading off, and I'm coming back, and I'm getting into kind of an orthodox boxing stance, right? So again, you push, and I come off, and I blade off, because I don't want her to get this weapon that I have on my side, whether it's concealed or not, it doesn't matter because if you run into somebody like me, they might try to freaking test you and probe you and go for that firearm even if they don't know that you have it. And again, if you have a tactical folder in your pocket, like a lot of bros do, if someone like me sees that and I don't have one myself, or even if I do, one of the first things I'm gonna be thinking about is going for your knife because I wanna take it out of the equation. Whether or not I cut you and stick you with it, it's you know to be seen, it depends on the situation. But I know if I want to get physical with you, I don't want that thing coming out and getting physical with me. So what I'm going to do is try to get to it as quickly as possible and maintain positive control over it. Thusly, we are blading ourselves off when we get pushed, just like this. Now, the question has been raised when I've taught this before, well, like, aren't you a little bit unstable now because now you are showing them your side? Well, perhaps, but push me and then she's gonna try to rush into me and move into me, right? So I can throw my elbow out here, and then I can get this in the mix, I can get this at play, right? And this is that classic close quarter battle stuff you'll see um, with cool guys on YouTube and they're advertising their CCW courses or whatever, right? It's like this, and they bring it out, and they've got this going, and they go boom, boom, boom into like a target that's like two feet away. I mean, yeah, there's validity to training like that, absolutely, and this is why. But it doesn't matter necessarily that we're here, like if you study Wing Chun or something like that, you're gonna hear about don't tightrope, don't tightrope, but then if you study classic Western boxing, which beats Wing Chun almost every time, you're gonna you know, be tightrope. So yes, there's pros and cons to everything, but I did wanna just briefly touch on that. So we're blading off, and we're able now to maintain control of our firearm like that and get it out into the mix. We're also avoiding her going ahead now rush for my firearm. And we can keep it like this and get keep this out of the mix, push her back, and if you notice here, keep going. This forearm pushes into the throat, and we can go ahead and make distance, make space, and if we need to discharge that firearm, then we can. So, how about pushing? How do we push somebody? Before we discuss that, one more thing. So Jen's gonna push me again and I'm going right back into like an orthodox boxing stance. So a lot of times fights ob obviously start with pushing. So learning how to deal with it and recover from it and getting aggressive with it is really going to be important. So push me again. That's gonna be a big, big thing. So one more time. What the fuck? And we go and we get aggressive. Now notice that back foot it gets firmly planted and I'm automatically in a Western boxing stance, right? My forearm can come and meet into a throat. That can turn into a chop, right? So she's blocking it and that's good because that really is what's going to happen. So again, that's into a chop and then we can get aggressive and rush in. It will ultimately more than likely turn into some kind of a clench situation. She's gonna dig for her underhooks, right? And then maybe we dig all of that, you know, classic wrestling, pummeling, jujitsu stuff. Um, but that's not what we're talking about here. That's going to come in the hand to hand portion. But just suffice to say, this can turn into an automatic combat stance. Whereas if I'm just chilling here, push me, 
and I go, whoa, whoa, and I don't know what to do, that's why we're trying to arm you with this knowledge, is even if you don't have a super high level of hand-to-hand -hand combatives, it doesn't matter because once you are able to just put this foot back, it immediately gives you a little bit more foundation, base, spring, and you're able to kind of explode into that target, or whatever that target may be. And again, a lot of the times in close protection work, we're not armed. Like if you're working overseas, you probably, depending on where you are, are not going to be armed. Like if when I go to Europe and do this stuff, or when I have done this stuff in Europe, I was never armed. Um, I had a pen. <laughs> I mean, I had a vest, I had a pen, right? So it depends. Like Denmark, certainly you can't be armed. Um, unless you're working with the royal family, whatever, you're Danish. Uh, a lot of places you're not going to be. And again, if you are doing this stuff, like working with an informant secret squirrel type of stuff, you might not also um, necessarily want to be armed as well to like give away that the fact that you're somebody, you might just want a good pair of sneakers and freaking a smooth tongue, right? So um, learning how to deal with all this stuff and do all this stuff without relying too much on your freaking Flash Gordon um, CQP skills is going to be really valuable um, always. So, all right, so how about pushing somebody? Pushing somebody, we're going to move a little closer towards the camera. Pushing somebody, uh, there's a right way and a wrong way to do this. So when we push somebody, if Jen puts her hand on me and tries to push me, but she leaves her fingers like this, there's a number of things obviously I can do. Number one, I can start reaching and breaking finger. Number two, I can come in with a wrist lock. Uh, number three, I can simply grab this up and deliver strikes into her. It just puts her at odds. Um, and likewise, if she leaves it there for too long, same thing. I can trap it. I can go for a chin jab. All that World War II combative stuff that we're going to be learning um, comes into play, right? So what she wants to do is the proper way to push someone back, make a little space as Jen just move a little bit closer, is going to be a heel palm strike into the upper part of the chest. Why not the lower part of the chest? Because go ahead, I can kind of eat this, especially if I'm a stronger guy, right? But now do it on the upper part of the chest. I'm going to automatically be less stable up here. It's like a freaking tower, right? You push the upper part and it goes. You push the middle part and it can kind of bend and flex a little bit. So she's going to deliver a really hard heel palm strike. Now, when we're doing this, we're going to leave our fingers out of the equation. We're going to close it like a classic, like, you know, old school judo tiger strike thing. We're going to be doing just that. And it's a strike as well as a push. So I'm not going to hurt you, but I'm just going to demonstrate this. It's this. And you come a little bit more on camera. Boom, perfect. So it's this. It's, hey, get back, get back. And now notice we're here. We leave this up in case we need to kind of blade off and fence off. We can start reaching for our sidearm. Typically when adrenaline starts flowing, um, even a stupid little like Velcro retention strap like this, everything on here is going to get more difficult, right? So as soon as we like run into things and I'm working and I'm not going against Jen, who's beautiful, cute little girl, um, you know, woman at like freaking, how tall are you? Five three. And it's instead freaking, you know, um, Tyrell and he's freaking six three and like jacked out of his mind and he just got out of prison. Like it's not going to be the same feeling, right? It may be the same reactions. It may be the same actions right but it's not the same feeling so if i need to say to tyrome or whatever or freaking you know james who's just got out of prison and he's got freaking lightning bolts on his neck and stuff i don't want to be messing around um but i just want you to be i just want you to be aware that um it's going to be a lot more difficult so we can make up for this by training in the same way that we're more likely to react and that is by taking into account and going slow at first and starting slow and taking every single action really slow, smooth, and efficient. That way when we are all adrenaline shot out of our mind, we've got this big ass dude and we need to push him back, but we freaking, this thing is caught and this thing and Murphy's Law comes into effect. We can't get this out. At least we can kind of have that muscle memory and slow it down and say, okay, and it just comes out a little bit smoother. So whenever we're working, we're gonna work slow, 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 a little bit faster, a little bit faster, medium pace, fast, then slow it back down. 
So I want you to grab a pen, take a note. Remember I said at the beginning of this, there's going to be a couple things that we're going to have to take notes on. So slow, 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 a little faster, medium speed, fast, slow it back down and start it over like that. That's everything we're going to be doing here is slow, slow, medium, slow, medium, fast, then slow it back down. All right. So now Jen is going to demonstrate this again on me, on the upper part of my chest rather than the lower part. And so even she might luck out and catch my throat a little bit, even better. We're not going for that, but if it happens, it happens perfect. Again, one more time, do it hard. Do it hard. So you see there, she got aggressive, she put her energy in it, and I couldn't help but going back. I was even trying to like brace myself on that back foot, but I went back. So that's what I want you guys to think about doing is getting aggressive with it. Grab a pen. Aggression wins the fight every time. Aggression wins the fight every time. I've been in a lot of fights, guys, and all of the fights where I flipped that switch and said, fuck this, I'm going to end the other guy, I'm going to kill him, I've pretty much come out decently, right? If not winning it, I like close to it, um, if you can imagine what that means. So I really want you to be thinking every time you're drilling this stuff, it can be tempting, yes, to like go through the motion, like I'm tired anyway, I'm thinking about this other thing, but I really want you to like put your concentration in it when you're doing this. And again, it doesn't matter if you don't have a partner to work with. I want you to be thinking about doing this on a wall. You just push it and blade off, push it and blade off, push it and blade off, get ready to fight. Maybe you could push it and then, you know, go into a boxing stance, throw a one, two, one, two, something like that. And we'll get into this more in the hand to hand combatives. You can get to a heavy bag, guys, even better. You deliver that palm strike, step back, either maybe move out of the way, something like that, get a little um, heart rate going. But I really want you to start thinking about once you've done a couple of concentrated slow reps, to start getting a little angry with it and get a little power, a little aggression into it. All right, so I believe we've like beat pushing and getting pushed with a by a dead horse, what a busty expression, I like a dead horse. Yes. So unfortunately we have, but there's kind of a lot to that and there's a lot to everything that we're talking about. I wanna make sure I don't cheat you guys out of any good information. Now we're going to get into stepping in front of our client. So when we're walking with a client, what we're doing is we're standing behind them. Why not in front of them? I've had several guys confused and say, shouldn't a bodyguard be in front of their client? Well, I don't have eyes in the back of my head. I'd like them when they come out with eyes in the back of your head for shale surgically implanted. I'm the first one that's going to get them done, but they don't have them yet. I don't have eyes in the back of my head. So yes, I can see if there's a threat coming here, but generally um, threats don't just like fight fair. They're going to try to sneak up on you from behind. So I am going to bring her ass right back here, literally. Um, I'm going to be standing at a 45 degree angle. That way she can look over her shoulder and it's still there. She can also say, hey, Will, I really like that purse over there. That's beautiful. And I can say, keep dreaming. <laughs> standing on this shoulder. Now, generally, you're going to be standing over their left shoulder, but there's not exactly a hard and fast rule. It's kind of situationally dependent. And we move as things develop, as things um, come across. So maybe we're walking in a city street and we see a really menacing guy over this way. So we're going to be standing behind her and maybe as she passes that guy beside her. So if the guy wants to lunge, he has to lunge and deal with me before he deals with her. We'll get into that. We're going to be standing 45 degree behind her. She can see if I was directly behind her, it's a little bit creepy. Like, <laughs> I don't care who you are, man, woman, whatever. It's going to be a little bit like creepy to have someone standing direct, directly behind you and you can't see them. Okay. Hence the reason we're also, um, if we were directly behind them, it's going to be more difficult to eventually step in front of them. Okay. Now, when we want to step in front of our client to do that, well, somebody could be coming up and approaching rapidly and it could be a number of things in the bodyguard profession. It could be somebody wanting an autograph or that same person who's acting like they want could have a knife, could have a gun, could have a poison needle, right? So we need to be aware of that. And whenever we're rapidly approaching, 
like, it's just going to be step in front. Now, when we train this, there's more to that. Jen, step back, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, perfect. All right, so I want you to be aware of the footwork. Now, what we're doing here is the exaggerated version of this is to look like this. And we're also going to be grabbing up the arm because we don't want them going anywhere. So it's going to look like, okay, oh shit, threat front, threat front, stepping in front, just like that. One more time, we're going to slow it down for you guys so when you drill, it can look just like this. First of all, leg in this case goes parallel to her leg. Second of all, but at the same time, we come and kind of scoop her back a little bit. We're getting her offline. Then we're standing directly in front of her. We're going to be grasping up her arm. If we can't get her arm, this could be a piece of her jacket. This could be whatever we can get a hand on. But we want to grip this to make sure that momentarily she doesn't run away. Because obviously, she sees somebody coming up and approaching with a knife or with a gun or with whatever the fuck. Then she doesn't want... Um, I don't want her to get scared and run away. People have all kinds of weird fright reactions. Most likely it's going to be to freeze. But another fright reaction I've personally experienced is flight. And people will just run. As soon as they sense danger, some people just, they're out. And before you know that, before maybe you've even seen it, they're out. So that's why we're grabbing them up. So it's going to be looking like this. Threat front. We grab them. In that case, you see I had to literally just grab it, grab and grab. But that's what it is. So after that, obviously, what do we do here? Well, what if we just been drilling the put? Threat front, okay. Hey, get back! And we push whoever it is away enough to make a little bit of space. Now we've got a number of options from here. Um, we could do a cover and evac. So, go, 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 go. Um, there's a number of ways that we can spin them around. Get them to do what we want so after we're here okay so maybe we say get back maybe we don't want this fight maybe i don't have a solid arm i don't have a team with me i don't really have a way of addressing this problem i know i'm probably going to be outgunned and plus i've only got one hand in the mix here guys i've got my other freaking hand wrapped up with hers right so what am i really going to do like get away freaking bro no um i really want to just get away from this threat as quickly as possible so her around and we're going to grab her. One of the best ways to do this is when we turn them around. Go ahead, we're gonna uh, stand behind me, please. Thank you. So we're here. One of the best ways to do this is literally to turn around and push them on the shoulder. After that, we're gonna go ahead and take our hand, grab the back of their neck, and while we do that, something that I learned that is not so friendly, but in an emergency situation. We come and we uh, split them over like that by taking a ridge hand into their stomach. This is not a hard blow. We're not trying to hurt them, especially if it is our client. We don't want to break a rib and then get fired and not work again, right? So we really want to go ahead and get their attention. Maybe they're stiff as a board because they're really scared. Okay, now they're going. Go, 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 go. And we maintain that human shield effect over the back of them. So it can happen fast. It takes a lot of drilling and training to really get this to happen when you need it. But after you drill this enough, and after you've done this enough times, it will become second nature, I promise you. So one more time, that's going to look like uh, you're standing 45 degrees behind them. Something develops in front of you. You don't like it. Um, a lot of the times, it's going to look like this. Sometimes it could simply be like a lot less like that and more discreet and simply step in front of them. Uh, it just kind of depends on your comfortability with the threat and all of that. But let's just say for our sake of things right now and for training, this, we come in front, get back. We know we don't want that fight. We're gonna turn them around, go, 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 go. And that's kind of the way of doing it. Um, so we're gonna do that just one more time, slow down at really slow pace. So if you guys have a partner that you can drill this with, you're going to be able to do it. And stand this way, face that way. All right, so we're standing behind them, 45 degree. Actually, we'll do it this way so it's easier. Um, and it's going to be here. We're coming and we're scooping a hand. As we scoop the hand, this scoops up their free hand and we take care of it. We can either grasp it like this in like an overhook style, or generally we're going to really want to get a firm grasp on their wrist. 
Now we know, oh crap, get back, bad boy, get back, buddy. Now we've pushed him back, we've got that split second to react, right? So we can turn around, grab them up, and go, 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 go. Is it always going to look pretty? And we're always going to have the opportunity to come in and do this and then turn around and do this fancy thing. No, it doesn't matter. We, all we really want to do is get the opportunity to step in front of them. And it helps if you go ahead and always utilize your left hand. If you're a right-handed shooter, you want to make sure that you're scooping up their hand with your left. So that just in case you have your firearm with you and on you and you need to access it, um, you don't get it all scooped up in here and then it's like difficult and it's cumbersome. So always that left. So really what it probably will end up looking like is, oh crap, all right, get back. Go, 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 go. And when you're going with them, what you want to be telling them is where you want them to go. You want to communicate with them. So when we're behind them, we're on automatically looking for things, looking for places, to take them. So maybe that's go into that shop right there in front of you. Go, go, go. Or go run. We're going to go to my car. You ready? Go, 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 go. Stay in front of me. Stay in front of me. Go. All right. So we want to be giving them instructions whenever we possibly can. So that's kind of the basics there about moving a principal, a client, whatever it is um, that you're dealing with. You want to kind of be able to move them and move them in the right way and um, get them going. So one more thing that we're going to do here is just about that chop and moving them out. So maybe you are standing in front of them for whatever reason. Um, getting them kind of like doubled over is kind of half the battle. So, and then we can go and go, go, go. When I'm coming and um, really trying to get her kind of doubled over, I'm not doing it to be a dick. I'm not doing it to like manhandle and feel like a man, right? No, no. But I'm getting it, um, the effect is what I, excuse me, the effect that I want is to get their mind off of what's going on. So some serious shit is happening, right? They're going to be like, oh my God, what's happening? The next thing they know is, oh, I don't know what, and then you go. You're breaking their concentration and you're literally like limbering them up so that they're going to be pliable enough for you to work with and move them because you can't move like a stiff body that doesn't want to be moved. You're going to be stuck there on that X and then you're both going to get killed. But if you can take their mind off it and move them real quick, it's going to be a lot better for everyone involved. So don't freaking, again, I said this already, don't go ahead and try to get their ribs. Don't chop them in the throat. <laughs> don't punch them in the face. I've even heard that before from like a high level guy. He's like, I would just punch them in the face and get them to move. No, bro, this is not lifeguard training. This is like not what we're doing here. You punch a freaking billionaire in the face and see if you still have a job in the morning. I guarantee you, you won't. But if you do hit them just there in the, in the stomach area, um, you'll soften them up and get them to move out a lot quicker and a lot more pliably. So those are just a few quick, quick like tips for me to you, kind of the more meat and potatoes of this executive protection stuff. There's so much to this, guys. Look on my YouTube channel. I've got great old school tutorials from when I was fresh out of these bodyguard schools. I really went into depth with like how to take them out of a vehicle, how to put them into a vehicle, work with a team. Like I've got a whole series of executive protection one-on-one -on -one stuff on my YouTube channel, totally free. Uh, go ahead and check those out. But I do want to put these in this program because it really is essential to know if we're going to be protecting anybody, how to do it in the right way. All right, guys, so let's jump in. We're going to do a little bit of talking about counter surveillance now and how to do it the right way. Not necessarily simply counter surveillance, but surveillance detection and anti surveillance. And we'll jump in and discuss what the meanings of each of those are in the next portion here. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next portion. Thanks.